Despite the upcoming wave of new Nuka-Cola items, Bethesda is also planning to release lots of new prefabricated structures and a few building kits and bundles too. Let's dive in. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. In this item of review, I'm going to show you the major building highlights coming soon to the Wasteland, possibly in the following weeks for Atomic Shop items. As for Season 11 entries, well, that's only coming in December with the Nuka World on Tour DLC. Anyway, for this video, I selected 8 new prefabs, including pirate ships, a tree house and a prison car. There's also a new exciting building kit for farming purposes and another canoe bundle. Alright, I hope you're ready, let's get into the details. Who would have guessed that Bethesda was planning to release pirate ships? Huh? I mean, I have seen a few ship-looking camps in the past, so perhaps that's where they found inspiration to go forward with the idea. Anyway, there are two pirate ship prefabricated structures in the game files with the Nuka World on Tour DLC, and they are both labeled as Atomic Shop entries. The preview surely makes it look exciting and realistic. I mean, the ship is made out of decaying wood, and metal scraps, so it's fitting for the wasteland reality. Now, if you are wondering about the second part ship, well, it's basically the same model. No kidding. In the game files, the two ships have very distinctive names, as you can see. There's the sea legs and the land lubber part ships. However, both use the same exact asset. The only difference is the foundation part, as shown here. As to be expected, the land lubber is the left one with the short foundation, which is meant for soil placements for the most part. In contrast, on the right side, there is the long legs with very long wooden poles to place inside the water. It's very well thought, actually. After all, some water parts are quite deep, so without such a foundation, it would be difficult to allow the part ship to set sail, if you know what I mean. Well, as for the rest, boat ships use the same exact asset for the structure. It comes with a lot of naval elements, such as round small windows, a real ship as the roof, broken flagpoles and even a proper place if you wish to add some sort of wheel later on. Let's not forget about the matching door too, it couldn't be any more fitting than this. As for the building space, there is plenty to go around, starting with the roof, which is pretty much an open book. You can even build on the roof parts, if I'm not mistaken. As for the cabin, first of all, it's connected to the roof with narrow stairs. Overall, it's not a large space, but it's a pretty cozy one, more than enough to turn it into your living quarters or command room. Here's a small tour inside to let you see how it looks like and to exemplify what can you do with it. I think this is one of the most creative prefabs Bethesda has come up with in the past few months. I'm impressed. What about you? What do you think about this one? Another unique prefabricated structure on the way to the Atomic Shop in the following weeks is the watch post in a tree. It's pretty much one of the many existing tree houses in 76. This is a sort of small version though, with very little stairs, it's really not that tall. And the structure itself, it's also on the small side. Regardless, it's a cute little space that can be turned into your wasteland dream house. It's actually the very first tree house released to players, so I can only imagine some of you will be very happy to put your hands on this one. Anyway, this item features a huge dead tree supporting the watch post with prominent roots and branches, like the ones found in the Toxic Valley region. As for the building space, as I mentioned earlier, it's really tiny. It's like a cubicle, actually. Then again, this is not exactly a tree house, as the name indicates. It's supposed to be a watch post, so naturally it features a small space. Either way, it looks lovely and it's perfect to create your secret little corner. You can even lock the door to block undesired guests from peeking around. Next in line we have the prison car, which looks like this intimidating train car. It's normal after all, it used to be for transporting prisoners, so yeah. Naturally, it doesn't look that cute. The great thing here is that it's the wasteland, so anything goes. As in, anything with walls and a roof 
it's the perfect place to take shelter or build a camp. Just like existing train car prefabs, this one also comes on top of a concrete foundation and it's painted orange with lots of rust. There's also some sort of barrier at the car's entrance too and I'm not entirely sure that's supposed to be the door, I don't think so, but who knows. Anyhow, the available space inside is the same as other train cars already in game. It's a vertical area with a decent amount of space. It's not exactly large as you can see, but it's certainly larger than the last new entry for sure. Anyway, this prison car is a season 11 reward, so expect it to come live only in December with the Nuka World on Tour DLC. It's still not clear if this is a free reward or an exclusive one for Fallout First members, just to let you know. Talking about Season 11, here's another prefabricated structure part of it. That's right, the Nuka Quantum delivery truck is also part of the next season, which is coming live with the Nuka World on Tour DLC. Despite being a rather traditional item following the Nuka Quantum team, with the blues and space elements, this item is not exactly a very unique one. After all, the standard model, the Nuka Cola, is live for a while already, so this is nothing more, nothing less than a variation of an existing structure. I can't say I'm very fond of the concept, but we better get used to the idea because, boy oh boy, the next DLC will bring lots of variation rewards. And yeah, we have to accept it, I suppose. Anyhow, variation or not, this is still a truck, so don't expect it to be too spacious. Actually, building inside this prefab is quite limiting and challenging, as you can imagine. Or if you already own the original, you should be aware of this too. The limitations affect both space and height. So plan ahead if you wish to decorate this sort of truck. Moving forward, the Wild Mountain Rifle Range is a new military structure created as a free reward for the 25th anniversary of Fallout in 76. In fact, this is a pretty hidden reward, part of a two-week challenge-based event dependent on dailies and weeklies, which I have explained and covered in this other video here. However, the item is not live yet, as in nobody could get it yet, but very, very soon, since the requirements ask players to unlock mystery atomic shop entries for two entire weeks. As such, I decided to add it here as part of the list. Moreover, not everyone was aware of this event and rewards during the first week, which might prevent many from unlocking this free prefab in the end. Well, at least you can see it here with all the details you could hope for. The Wild Mountain Rifle is rather large, as shown in these in-game clips. At least it's much larger than all the previous structures I covered so far in this overview. The inside space features a rectangular area with plenty of space for your imagination to go wild, ideally for shooting, but that's just one of the many possibilities you can go for in this space. As for the outside, it's a pure military compound made out of concrete and metal parts, pretty standard. It actually looks like a small bunker at the surface. Alright, the next prefab is this massive castle gate called Port Cooley's Medieval Gate, which is an atomic shop entry too. I covered this one in a past video since, well, it's part of the game files for many months now. However, it seems like the gate mechanism was bugged, probably why it got delayed so far. Since the last time I covered it, there is a major change, but as they replaced the old mechanism to open close the gate, which was first done with a giant lever at the top of the gate, as shown in this screenshot. Now, according to the data miner Madoc Rod, the lever was scaled down and moved to the gate grids, which will now roll up and down once the player interacts with the smaller lever. Here's the animation preview to clear any doubts. It's much simpler now. Good job, Bethesda, you did the right thing. Moreover, this gate is not an isolated structure. After all, the Port Cooley's medieval walls have already been released into the atomic shop quite a few weeks ago already. It was to say that they will pair perfectly with this new gate once it reaches the live servers. 
The Concrete Mausoleum was released this past Tuesday, November 1, into the Atomic Shop, so it's still very, very new, very fresh. As such, I decided to leave it here as part of this list, as I originally made it. In the end, not everyone buys the same exact items, so here it goes, a short overview. The Cement Crypt came live with its own matching metal grid door, as you can see. It was a pleasant surprise as a Halloween release and I think it's a creative boost for many 76 builders out there. Despite being relatively small, as a mausoleum should be, there's something really spooky about this one. If you go inside, you will notice that all the walls are scratched endlessly, as if some sort of beast was trapped or kept inside for a very long time. Creepy indeed. But again, it was a nice touch for Halloween from Bethesda's part. With 8 new prefabs out of the way, do let me tell you about the upcoming Rough Patcher Planter Kit, which is the very first building kit made for agriculture for planting food in 76. Anyway, this gardening kit looks promising since it's meant to host all your dear plants and keep the food production running in style. The kit features 5 different parts as shown, but each part is more like a 3-in-1 merged item. They all include a foundation, a wall and a roof, all in one. It's really a one-of-a-kind kit in every single aspect. You can even go as far as creating your own protected plantation, if you wish, by putting all the parts together, as shown here. Or you can go for some sort of weird soil-based prison that could also work. Hey, it's the wasteland, I'm not judging, not at all. The funny part here though is that this set seems to be a Nuka Cola one, the entrance is shaped as a Nuka Cola bottle, so that's why I think it is, but I'm not 100% sure. If you're thinking about where's the matching door, I haven't seen any, so I'm afraid it won't include one, but again, it's not 100% set in stone. Maybe it will, maybe the set is still incomplete, only time will tell. Either way, soon enough, you will be able to upgrade your farm or veggie garden, and I think that's something a lot of you guys really wanted. Lastly, I selected another Kanoe bundle, yes, yet another one, but as the has created three more items following the Kanoe team, I know I murdered that word, but that's the way it is, I like to murder words, it's in my blood. Two new chairs and a planter, that's all we are getting this time, which should join the existing Kanoe items already live for mounts. As for this bundle, we have this boat net chair, another super creative idea, I might add. Actually, I think most of the Kanoe collection is genius and totally in sync with the wasteland. Anyhow, the second new chair is a more cozy one with pillows and everything, also made from parts of a small wooden boat. And lastly, there's this decorative planter with some strange veggie growing inside. Don't ask me what it is though, I'm not entirely sure, it doesn't look that edible though, so let's not go there. Anyway, this planter looks superb, it even features two gardening tools and water pumps. Too bad, nothing seems to be functional, it's all about the looks over here. Well, I feel like Bethesda is embracing innovation over here, at least when it comes to camp items. There's a lot of existing and different stuff coming in the following weeks. This is just the beginning, the very beginning. There's even special stuff coming for Christmas and New Year, so stay tuned. As for the prefab structures, I think they look really great out of the ordinary, and for once, they are actually staying pretty faithful to the wasteland and post-apocalyptic themes. I love it. What about you? What do you think about the new structures coming soon? And which one was your favorite so far? Let me know everything in the comments below. Now it's time to wrap things up. Don't forget I'm hosting a screenshot Halloween event in my Discord with awesome prizes such as free Game Pass trials. Join my Discord and submit your best Halloween screenshot in the respective channel. The link is right below the video. Good luck! As for me, I am Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to help the channel out, and a huge shout out to all my dear patrons and members. Well then, I hope you're having a good one, see you in the next video, until then, take care, adios, bye bye!